I'm Father Chuck Dornquist, the Director of Vocations for the Diocese of St. Petersburg, and today I'm excited to be asking questions of the Director of Vocations for the Benedictine Monks of St. Leo Abbey. His name is Brother Apollo Rodriguez. Brother Apollo, thank you for joining us. Hello, it's good to be here. Awesome. Brother Apollo, are you ready to answer 20 questions? Bring it on. Great. First question. Where are you from? I was born in Hialeah, which is near Miami in South Florida. I think you went to seminary down there, didn't you? I did. I did. Oh, right. I with right around the block. And then uh, I moved to Claremont, which is in the Orlando area when I was five. And then at 21, I moved into the monastery. Oh, so I've wow. been in Florida all my life. I'm a Florida boy through and through. And oh, wow. Never seen snow. Okay. Uh, Brother Paulo, what do you do in your downtime? My downtime, I like to either do my prayer beads or I enjoy reading certain novels that uh, I've been introduced to. Very good. Uh, and uh, if you were to become a master woodworker overnight, what's the first thing you would build? A good chair. <laughs> Because I'm six foot four, so the chairs aren't always my friends. No, they are not. Uh, what song do you have completely memorized? Completely memorized? Uh, uh, the song Apartment by Young the Giant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was on the radio a few years ago, but I got it. I got it down. <laughs> All right. Uh, if, if you could be an animal for a day, what animal would you be? Uh, probably be an octopus just so I could test out what I could do with with eight arms I think it'd be really cool that and just like disappear and then jump out and scare people okay. camouflage right very good uh, do you believe in Bigfoot no <laughs> 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 I don't know. Very good. Uh, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie, still to this day, is Jurassic Park. It came out, I think, when I was three years old, so that was the first movie I remember seeing, and I still love it, always quote it. It's a great movie. Okay, speaking of, what's your favorite quote? Movie quote. <laughs> well, uh, life uh, finds a way, so... <laughs> <laughs> Brother Paulo, what's your favorite place? I recently went to Spain and it was absolutely beautiful. The countryside was so picturesque. So if I could go back there, I, I would. And it has a fond place in my memory. I loved it. Beautiful. Uh, what's your least favorite food? Canned spinach. Horrible memories from childhood. <laughs> All right. Well, Brother Apollo, those were the warm-up questions. Now we're All on right. to the deep dives. Uh, mm. If you could give, or if you had to give, a 40-minute presentation without any preparation, what topic would you speak on? I would probably talk about the rule of St. Benedict here, because I've had to read it like crazy, either because I needed guidance of some, of some sort, or I've had to help somebody to get through a rut that they were going through in their vocation discernment here. And so well, I've got memories from research for fun, research for presentations to groups of people, research for helping young men go through their discernment here and then also just for myself. So I could talk for a long time on just the rule. Appropriate for a Benedictine monk. <laughs> uh, I would hope so. <laughs> who or what has been most influential in your life? My life, it would, who has been most, it would definitely have to be my, my grandfather. He was, an example of how to be a man for me because 
he uh, taught me many lessons on discipline, how to control my anger, how to speak to other men in an appropriate manner, how to be an example to your family. And many of those lessons that I learned from him, I brought into the monastery. Where now that I'm the sub prior, uh, it's my responsibility to look after the, the physical house. And so all of those lessons have culminated in, in me being responsible for making sure that we all have a roof over our heads. And uh, yeah. Uh, what's the best way you think a person spends their time? a moment where you have nothing to do to just sit in silence you don't always have to be doing something with your thumbs and those uncomfortable memories that sometimes pop into your head that you want to drown out with say a YouTube video like sometimes lessons can be learned from those and so I always tell people, don't be afraid of silence. Don't be afraid of stillness. Embrace it. Run to it. Because you, you, you never know what you could find when digging in the mud, you know. Very good. Uh, is there anything at this moment that you're looking forward to? Us reopening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Once the retreat center is back open again. It's like, yeah, I, I got work to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, at what age did you start thinking about your vocation? When I was 21, just after I turned 21, I was discerning priesthood first. But I was doing most of my priestly discernment here at the monastery because I was doing youth retreats. I was running youth retreats. And then when the time came to apply to the Diocese of Orlando to be accepted, I stopped randomly because the idea of being a priest and being at a parish and the, the potential of having to not have a family structure within, say, a rectory was a really daunting thought but and so the monks reached out to me and they said have you ever thought about choosing us and i was like i've never really thought about it seriously let me let me think about it so i hung out with them more they got to know me i got to know them and it was a mutual embrace of of one another and that was how i, I shifted from thinking of priestly discernment to religious life it was it was a family decision pretty much I was adopted. Hello. <laughs> uh, and prior to you entering, what did your friends or family think? My friends, those who I did the retreats with, they were excited. They're like, yay, go for it. That's amazing. Because so many of my other guy friends, they went to the seminary and they were like, it was great, but it wasn't for me. And then my friends who weren't part of the retreat program, who weren't necessarily Catholic, they're like, you want to be a monk? What, are you going to dress in orange? I'm like, not that kind of monk, yo. And my family, they were, they were for it, but I don't think they entirely understood it. My grandparents were like, I knew it. I called it. I knew he was going to be a priest of some sort or be a, a religious or whatever. And then my dad, shockingly, he was for it because he had a good experience with Franciscan friars when he was young. He said, well, if you can be for other people what those friars were for me, then I'm for you becoming a monk. Um, and that, that was powerful motivation behind me. Um, and my mom was like, so grandkid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mom, there are enough Rodriguez's in the world. You are <laughs> That is funny. So, uh, what do they think now that you've been in it for quite a few years now, right? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been here for six years already. As of July 8th of this past year. And, yeah, well, it's been 
it's been a roller coaster. It, it, was, it was, yeah, I love it. I love being here. I got to get out of here. It's, it's been all over the place. But I mean, I imagine that's just life in general. Yeah. And how do you feel about it now? They, they turned around. They, they were, they were for it, and then they were against it, and then they were for it again. And it was usually, we, we, we would switch sides. When I wanted to stay, they wanted me to leave. When I wanted to leave, they wanted me to stay. And so, <laughs> so it all just balanced itself out in the end. And when I was really, 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 really scared, my mom was like, "Don't you leave? Don't you give up now?" She wow. never wanted me to be a quitter. Okay. And uh, so yeah, wow. I had I had the backing of my family pushing in the opposite direction all the time. Well, hopefully that pressure pushes you towards straight up. Yes. Uh, what's one thing you wish people knew about Catholicism? About Catholicism, that it has so much depth to it. You can't throw a stone without finding something interesting or something new about Catholicism. And I, I, I always tell people this, that Catholicism, we have the curse of a long history. And it's like, oh, is that a bad thing? It's like, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's like, we've been around for so long and so we've had all of these lessons that we've learned throughout history. And we have so many interesting people and interesting thinkers from every corner of the world and every different mindset. I mean, just look at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. He was such an inspiration for thinking outside the box and uh, encountering different ideas and seeing, well, how can I connect something that's entirely foreign to me into my Catholic faith? Just so happens I was born on St. Thomas Aquinas Day, so <laughs> January 28th. And uh, so, yeah, it's just, there's so much depth and gravity to the Catholic faith, and it's nothing superficial about it at all. Beautiful. Uh, what's the one thing you wish people knew about monastic life at St. Leo Abbey? Monastic life at St. Leo Abbey, that we're not a bunch of old guys just chilling here, doing nothing. I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm what, I'm 27 now, but I joined when I was 21. So I've, I won't say I've grown into a man. I'm still growing into a man, but I've found more and more of myself while being here. And I've seen people that have come here and tried it out, found out it wasn't for them, left in peace, but grew as a person. And so there's something about monastic life, and especially since we're the only ones in Florida, I imagine it's a big state, only place perhaps to find whatever it is that we have to offer, whether it be just peace and quiet or an opportunity to find yourself more. Final question. Uh, what's right. one thing that you would say to someone who's thinking about uh, being in religious life? Don't shy away from an inkling of a call. Charge into it head on. Find out information about it. The worst thing that could happen is that you don't do anything and you spend the rest of your life wondering if you're standing on the wrong side of either the altar or of the choir stall or you're in the wrong end of the church. Jump in and find out because it's, it's a no commitment thing up front. You're just finding out, well, you know, what is it about this life that I find so enamoring? Find out. Awesome. Brother Apollo, if people wanted to reach out or connect with you, how would they do that? I have an email and I have an office phone that uh, people who can reach out to me too. Is that on a website uh, they could also, somewhere? Yes, it's on our Facebook. It's yeah. on our some of our Instagram posts. It's on our website. And, and what's your handle for uh, Instagram? Instagram is Saint Leo Abbey. Saint is spelled out though. Very good. Well, Brother Paulo, thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for answering twenty questions. It's been a pleasure, Father Chuck.
Uh, and please remember to pray for all of our young people who are discerning a call to religious life, uh, to pray for the Benedictine community at St. Leo's who've been there since 1887, since 1887 at St. Leo Abbey, uh, that we might have an abundance of vocations in our diocese uh, and that more and more of our young people might courageously respond to the call that the Lord has placed in their lives.